So here we have test question. Pause the video, take a few minutes, read this test, guess which answer is correct, and after let's discuss this test step by step. So it's 40 year old man. His first complaint is swelling of both legs, which is basically edema. And we know that edema develops due to the increase in hydrostatic pressure or decrease in narcotic pressure. He also has decreased urine output, we call this state oliguria. From anamnesis, we know that he has a history of hepatitis B infection. In addition to this, on physical examination, he has periorbital edema and ascites. And we know that both of them developed due to the increase in hydrostatic pressure or decrease in oncotic pressure. His hemoglobin is 105, which is low. Decrease in hemoglobin we call anemia. His albumin level is decreased. Decrease in albumin level can be explained by decrease in albumin's production, which tell us about liver injury, or by loss of albumin's with the urine, which tell us about kidney injury, more precisely about glomerulonephritis. By low albumin level, we can explain his symptoms, because decrease in albumin cause decrease in oncotic pressure, which cause lack edema, periorbital edema and ascites. And if we take into the account his oliguria, we can say that most likely low albumin level is caused by kidney injury. So the problem in this case is definitely with kidneys. His urine protein excretion is 5 grams per day, which is huge. And we know that everything higher than 3.5 grams of protein per day is classified as nephrotic syndrome. Important that he does not have red blood cells in the urine. So, nephritic syndrome is absent. So, this patient has kidney injury with nephrotic syndrome. His anemia can be explained by decreasing erythropoietin production due to the kidney injury. But how to explain increase in total cholesterol? Recall that we have two major groups of glomerulonephritis. It's glomerulonephritis which is characterized by nephrotic or nephritic syndrome. In this case, patient has proteinuria greater than 3.5 grams per day, and he has no red blood cells. So it's definitely nephrotic syndrome. And as we see, nephrotic syndrome is characterized by increase in total cholesterol and decrease in total albumin concentration, which are both present in this case. In addition to this, we have to know that patients with nephrotic syndrome have a higher risk of thrombosis due to the loss of antithrombin into the urine, and they have a higher risk of infections due to the loss of immunoglobulins into the urine. In tests with glomerulonephritis, the most important is to determine which syndrome is present. In this case, it's nephrotic syndrome. So now, knowing this, we can rule out all subtypes of glomerulonephritis which are characterized by nephritic syndrome, and it's a huge group. So, in this case, it's not lupus nephritis, simply because there is no nephritic syndrome and no lupus. Acute interstitial nephritis is also highly unlikely. The reason is that acute interstitial nephritis typically is provoked by intake of drugs. Intake of drugs induce type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, which is characterized by fever, rash and eosinophilia in both blood and urine. In this case, nothing of this is present, so it's not acute interstitial nephritis. We are left with three subtypes of glomerulonephritis which are characterized by nephrotic syndrome. And at this point, in this type of test, Anamnesis is always plays crucial role. First of all, we have to mention that lupus can also cause nephrotic syndrome, because lupus is associated with membranous nephropathy, but in this case there is no lupus. For diabetic nephropathy, patient should have diabetes. In this case, patient do not have diabetes, 
so it's definitely not diabetic nephropathy. Minimal change disease is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in children or in patients with Hodgkin lymphoma. Nothing of this is present. But what patient has is a history of hepatitis B infection. And as we see, nephrotic syndrome, which is associated with infections like hepatitis B, hepatitis C and syphilis, is membranous nephropathy. So, the correct answer here is membranous nephropathy. And in tests like this, you determine whether it's nephritic or nephrotic syndrome. And within the group, you search for a subtype based on a patient's anamnesis or disorders.